What is it that prevents people from doing the things they already want to do in life? The most basic answer, I'm sorry it's so simple, but it's true, it's fear. You know, people making this complex process, this woman's told me, that I don't understand why I don't do this, why I feel this way. I said, it's called fear. Everybody's afraid we're not enough. Everybody's afraid we're not rich enough, smart enough, young enough, quick enough, fast enough. It's human nature. But the secret is to do it anyway. I know that sounds so simplistic. My work when I'm working with somebody is showing you how to condition yourself, like building a muscle, so that you take action first, automatically. Because if you don't do that, it's hard. You lose momentum. It's like, how do I get started? Where do I go? And I tell people, throw a rock, wherever it drops, start there. The next person walks by, I go, you're the first person after the rock. Do anything <laughs> to start the process of moving forward rather than fear stop you. To say that where, where your focus goes, energy flows. Yes. Because it just takes you in that right place. The, then the intent part sneaks in there. Is, is the intent because you've got to pick what you want to do or just do something and you'll figure it out as you go? You need to be clear what it is you really want. I always tell people, you know, know not only what you want but why you want it. I know this is simplistic, but most people just don't do the blocking and tackling of their life. Uh, the one we were talking to earlier, a great lady, and you could just see she wants to have a new business, but she never sat down to even put a plan together and says, why am I taking action? Well, when you're not sure what you're going to do, you're going to hesitate. And hesitation kills momentum. And momentum is what makes a, a sports team win. It's what makes an athlete, a business person win. When you get momentum, it's like it takes enormous energy to get a rocket out of our, you know, our gravitational pull of the Earth. But out of the solar system, it's easy. Once it has momentum, it takes less fuel, less energy. Starting a relationship, starting a business, changing your body. It takes so much in the beginning. But once you get going, it's actually really easy. Common question I've been asked by the media my entire life that always makes me laugh is, well, don't you have bad days? Don't you have days when you're like frustrated and anxiety and pissed off and you watch TV and you eat Cheetos and watch pornography? And I said, well, I do some of those things. Right? <laughs> you know? And of course I do, but when I, it's like an athlete. I built muscle over the years so that it's not that I don't have feelings that I don't get hurt, I don't feel sad, I don't feel tired, I feel all those things. But they're not the dominant force in my life. It's a muscle. The mind is a muscle. Emotion is a muscle. I mean, I think the most powerful muscles are the invisible force muscles. It's your spiritual emotional muscles. Like, courage on you doesn't grow, it shrinks. So I put my axe on the line regularly so that it grows and when it keeps growing, then pretty soon the stuff that used to make me crazy, it doesn't touch me. It's not that I'm so great. Just I'm well trained. I trained this mind. I get up every morning in my life. You talk about rebound. The more crazy shit I do is every morning in my life. If I'm near, if I'm near any of my homes, and some places I have, I have cryotherapy. But my homes, I have these cold plunges, and they're 56 degrees. And the first thing I do is jump in that cold plunge. So there's not a morning where I want to jump in that. I can't remember morning. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to jump in that thing. But I don't negotiate with myself. I do it for two reasons. One, there's a physical health component. It moves your lymph system and the blood flushes through your whole body. But the main reason I do it, even more than that, is when I go up there, I don't, you know, people negotiate, well, maybe we'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do this. Or oh, let me wait two more minutes till I'm ready. There's none of that with me. For decades, I go, I say we do. I'm not here to discuss this shit with my mind. There's mind and then there's soul and spirit. And soul and spirit, my soul f knows. And when I say jump, you f jump. I'm not here to have a discussion with you. Some people never will have much. They're too cautious. Now you can also be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. This is called the timid approach to life. And my caution was always the risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. I used to say, what if this happens? It's called the language of the poor. What if this happens? And on top of that, if this was to happen, look at the fix I'd be in. I'd better not try. I could always ace myself out. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life when I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not gonna get out alive. <laughs> That's risky. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go. Right, that's what it's for. Give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security. Fine, then huddle in a corner. We'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day. And we'll protect you, feed you, look after you, 
care for you. We won't let anything happen to you. And you'll probably live to be 100. The guy said, well, yeah, I'd live to be 100. But what a way to live. Right. What a way to live safe and secure. Don't ask for security. Ask for adventure. Better to live 30 years full of adventure than 100 years safe in the corner. And see, it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. Here's the next attitude disease, pessimism. Pessimism, the deadly disease of always looking on the bad side, the problem side, the difficult side, checking all the reasons why it can't be done. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right. He tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue. He looks for faults. And when he finds them, he's delighted. How ugly. This is the poor guy looks through the window, doesn't see the sunset. He sees the specks on the window. And this is the poor guy, right, who rushes up, takes such leave of his senses. This guy rushes up and he says, I've got five good reasons why it won't work. He's so dumb, he doesn't know. All he needs one. He's got five. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. Why would the same measure affect people two different ways? Answer, it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us most. One of the major things Shove taught me when I met him, he said, poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. Not poor working habits. Most people work hard but they don't think hard. And Shove taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, as you think, so you become. How awesome. Dr. Alfred Gosen, uh, who has since passed, was a very unusual guy. And he told me, he said, Mr. Brown, you have cancer. I said, can you give me a second opinion? He said, yes, and you're ugly too. <laughs> I said, oh my God. <laughs> so I didn't have a chance to, to, to have fear because you know, those three words, you have cancer, three of the most feared words in seven different languages. I saw it as a fight. And, and, and from that time to this time, you know, my PSA was 2,400, less central prostate specific antigen, and, and now it's below zero and metastasized in seven areas of my body, which was a good thing because seven is my lucky number. <laughs> okay, so. No, I, I, I 
I never was fearful that I was going to die from it. And, and I think that I read something by Dr. Norman Cousins. He wrote a book called The Biology of Hope. And he talked about the fact that when something happens to you, you don't deny it, you defy it. And I was defiant that I'm going to beat this, I'm going to handle this. That there are people who many times when something happens to them, that they embrace it from a place of fear and it takes them out. And Elsie Robinson said, things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the most important things are the things that happen in you. And you have to stand up inside yourself and deal with it and handle it.